I've seen real serious problems with alcohol. And then as a psychiatrist, every day, one of my patient's problems is related to alcohol. Why is it so common then? If it's if it's so bad, why is everyone drinking? I feel like there's just like, drink, you watch the Super Bowl, every other ad is a drinking ad. Every it's other like, ad. Insurance, alcohol. Insurance, alcohol. Or why? pharmaceuticals. Yeah, pharmaceuticals. Right. Why, why is and that the it's world It's because we live in? we're indoctrinated, right? If you watch movies, you're just indoctrinated. Alcohol is everywhere. And we used to think it was a health food, right? Oh, we should have oh, yeah. a glass or two of red wine a day. It's good for your heart. No, it's bad for your brain. And uh, people just don't get it. Um, and it's part of the indoctrination from our society. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book called The End of Mental Illness. And in it, I have this writing device where I just imagined if I was an evil ruler and I wanted to create mental illness, what would I do? I'd create American society where <laughs> we're watching a brain damaging sport, right? The NFL yep. owns a day of the week. The NFL owns Sundays. Yeah. That watching a brain damaging sport, getting entertained by watching the demise of these men's families, right? If you really understand what happens to their families with brain damage, while I'm being fed, commercials for alcohol while wow, they're being given Gatorade sugar water on the sidelines and you just go oh this is why we're in the problem <laughs> that we're in in our society yeah I'm curious what how you'd respond to people that come from the field of thought that are like oh, I'll have a glass of wine here or there or I'll have sugar here or there things like that um People that come from like moderation standpoint, I, like how you yeah, respond to that. Yeah, everything in moderation is the gateway thought to hell. Oh. Because <laughs> as soon as you say everything in moderation, what you're saying is I'm cheating. Ah, now, okay. Now, nobody's perfect. <laughs> um, and, you know, my wife periodically will have a glass of wine. And I'll take a sip and I'm like, why are you drinking this? <laughs> this is awful, right? Whatever you have to develop a taste for something, it's probably not good mm. for you, right? Mm. You're overriding the body's natural, ew, this is probably I don't poison. know, my body, my body likes cookies from the get-go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but cookies don't like you back. <laughs> and you want to ask yourself this question. Like, I don't know if you've ever been in a bad relationship. I've actually only dated him. <laughs> well, you're, <laughs> I've only dated Abby. <laughs> then, We're high school students. Then hopefully it's, you've only had a good relationship. <laughs> well, I've been in bad relationships. And most people have been in bad relationships, yes, yes, right? Yes. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm only going to love someone who loves me back. And I'm married to my best friend. Mm. I'm not eating food or drinking things that doesn't love me back. Like, mm. why would I ever be in a bad relationship? Like, I love Oreo cookies, but they make me fat, depressed, and feeble-minded. <laughs> so why would I continue in a relationship with that, right? Because mm. I also love Honeycrisp apples, yeah. and they love me back, mm. as long as I don't squeeze them into apple juice. Because <laughs> juice, whenever you unwrap sugar, from its fiber source, think orange juice or apple juice, mm -hmm. it turns toxic in your body. There's a great YouTube video about it by Robert Lustig called Sugar, The Bitter Truth. Mm. And, uh, you know, one of my goals is to end the concept of mental illness by creating a revolution in brain health. So if I can get people to love their brain, and then you just, this one question, do I love what I'm eating or drinking or doing and does it love me back?